Welcome to the Church of the Holy Comforter's virtual Sunday liturgy on this 22nd Sunday following the Feast of Pentecost. I know that this is October 24th or thereabouts, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, so we're uh, a full month away from Thanksgiving, but wanted to invite you to participate in a long tradition that Holy Comforter has had with many of the churches in the Lutherville, Taos, and Timonium area. Uh, and that is to partner with uh, ACTC and Food for Thought uh, in providing Thanksgiving baskets for people that just don't have enough at this time of year. We can do this one of two ways. If you'd like to go to one of the local participating supermarkets, you can buy a basket and bring it to church. Um, or if you'd prefer, you can go ahead and uh, make a donation to us. Make sure that it specifies that this is for ACTC Food for Thought Thanksgiving baskets. Um, we will just need to have uh, those donations by next uh, two Sundays from now. Uh, we have a team of volunteers who can go and buy that. Easiest way to do this is go to holycomfortermd.org. That's our website, and you can go and find all the information that you need to participate in this really wonderful program that goes back many, many, many years. And now may the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. And so throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each one of our hearts be always acceptable to our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You cannot depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. Now that's what the famous author and agnostic Mark Twain once wrote. It's the same point that another Mark, the author of Mark's Gospel, I think drives home in this morning's pericope. Two weeks ago, we visited with the rich young man, if you remember, who comes running up to Jesus looking for the way into eternal life. He leaves with his head hanging low because what he owns actually owns him, and he can't bear to change that relationship. Then last week, Two of the twelve approach Jesus and re respond to Jesus' question, what do you want me to do for you, with requests for power and glory. And then Jesus, he continues on his journey. He's heading into Jerusalem eventually, um, and he's going in and out of uh, Jericho. It's the last stop before the confrontation, conflict, and crucifixion that he will find in the holy city. And, and there, while he's in Jericho, there's another person who approaches him as well. He's not rich, he's not young, he's poor, he's blind. And he throws away the only thing that he owns. It's a cloak, kind of serves as his blanket at night, his umbrella in the rain. It's his place to sit during the day. It's the place he can actually collect the loose change that people throw at his feet. His one possession tossed away at once when he hears the call of the one he knows to be the Messiah. And when Jesus asks him what it is that he wants, it's not to be seen, but to see. It's not to be followed, but to follow. And while Jesus can't give away the places of honor, he can give sight to this already insightful blind man, Bartimaeus. The whole thrust of Mark's gospel, it seems, is to move us from sight into insight. And while those closest to Jesus, they can see what they seem to lack right up until the very morning of the resurrection is insight. Peter, you remember, grabs him by the ear and hollers at him when he talks about the tremity and the suffering and the dying Messiah. And when he brings it up again, why that's the cue for James and John to ask for their seats of power and privilege. And so Mark contrasts these closest friends of Jesus, these true insiders, by introducing us to some of the most unlikely outsiders. They're the hopelessly lost. They're the rejected, the unwanted, who amazingly all display the insight that allows them to see Jesus for who he really is, even as his closest friends are half blind to what is standing right before their eyes. 
And so if you remember some of the stories we've been hearing in the last year in the Gospel of Mark, Mark kind of drags us within inches of the woman who's bleeding for 12 years. She has no right to approach Jesus, much less to touch him, because to touch him is going to make Jesus unclean. But you remember, she pushes through the crowd anyway, and she grabs the, the hem of his shirt, and he responds not with reproach, but with the same life-changing words that he utters today to Bartimaeus. Go, your faith has made you well. And then Mark sits us down as the Syrophoenician woman, a, a Gentile, confronts Jesus on behalf of her possessed daughter. And refusing to take even Jesus's no for an answer, she presses on until her need is met. You remember, surely even the dogs eat the crumbs beneath the master's table. And then Mark brings us face to face with a, a desperate father who struggles to increase his own faith so that his son may be delivered. And he says, I believe, help my unbelief. And then Mark sets us alongside Jarius, the, the temple big shot, who resists the taunts of the crowd to give up because they think his beloved little girl's already dead. But his insight allows him to stand there, hearing the most precious words even uttered in his lifetime. Talitha, come. Little girl, I tell you, get up. And so it's the children and the aliens, the sick and the dispossessed who show us what insight really looks like while the reputable folks stare at their shoes on the sidelines. In each of these encounters in Mark's gospel, it's a lesson in faith. One theologian said of faith, faith is the rude insistence that this calamity be attended to now. Faith throws off everything that gets in the way. Faith leaps up and stands naked before Jesus, trusting that all will be well. Only this faith, Mark tells us, can cure our paralysis, can cure our blindness. So what do you want me to do for you, Jesus asks. It's really a question that creates its own calamity. Should we jump in bed with James and John seeking power and prestige, the prized place in the line of secession? No, I think the challenge is to be like Bartimaeus, who instantly throws away everything he has and follows the Lord of faith. And so it is today that Mark urges us to focus not so much our eyes, but our imaginations. And with imagination come to marvel as Jesus turns relationships of power upside down, as Jesus unleashes the paradox of losing life in order to save it, making the last first, transforming the servant of all into the master of all, as he subverts the world that you and I see ushering in a new world, a world made visible only to those with insight. You see, Jesus is not about seizing power. He's about transforming relationships, every relationship, every relationship, from the most intimate to the vast structures that form the foundations of our society. Jesus invites us to join with those who are working to build a new society within the shell of the old. And that, my friends, is the journey from sight to insight. It is the journey of a disciple. And so may your journey be blessed. Amen.
was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to hear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that All loving and compassionate God, in this time of global pandemic, civil divisiveness, racial strife, and future unknowing, we pray that you would gather up all our reflections and hear within them our laments, our longings, our hopes, as we now pray for the church and for the world. For all who have died, with the gloved hand of a stranger to hold at the end. For endurance through the loss of strength and comfort found in community with others. For renewed contact with friends and family. For return to active lives without fear from illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for acceptance of viewpoints different from our own, for the will to seek and find goodness in one another, for unrest to end and openness to rise up among all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For courage to see racial inequalities in our nation and the will to address them, for an end to physical and psychological barriers 
based on race, color, or ethnicity. For the will to go first in loving one another as you love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For thoughtful determination of how to make the new normal better than the old ways. For wise decisions and right actions by those in authority to move us through uncertainty to stability and equality for all. For the church to be a renewed, faithful witness to the world. For your will to be done in our lives and in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the ways you bless our lives and abide in the world, we give you thanks. Gracious God, we lift up to you all these prayers using the words that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and burn in your hearts forevermore. Amen. Holy people of God, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.